Okay, I've seen too many memes at this point and people saying how great it is, so it's time to check out HDMX. This is what we'll build by the end of the video, a good old classic responsive to-do app, and yeah, I know very original, but what blows my mind is that we're somehow able to achieve this responsiveness by just writing HTML. First thing I had to figure out was what HTMX is, and I won't bore you with the details like what it stands for, so what is the purpose behind this project? Their goal seems to just be keeping it simple, simple to where you can build dynamic single page applications without the need of any complex JavaScript frameworks. It's actually doing this by integrating Ajax and a few other things like WebSockets within HTML. Yeah, remember Ajax? It's actually making a comeback. They're doing all of this through HTML attributes, which is crazy and why I wanted to check this out. The package is also extremely small, so it's definitely got a lot going for it, but how does that actually work in code? The setup I have going here is pretty straightforward. I'm using Drizzle ORM with a local SQLite database. If you want to learn more about Drizzle and how to set it up, check out the video in the description. But for the schema, I just set up a to-dos table. This table just has three fields, an ID, content, and a timestamp. The content is the actual text that the to-do will have. But next, I also have a seed script, and this script just takes three to-dos and adds them to the database, one for subscribing to CodeBrew, one for liking the video, and another one for checking out the other videos. For the API itself, I'm just using HANA with bun, which just has one get request that returns some text. To start off, we can simply just try out returning some HTML from the route instead of just some text, which which luckily HANA supports out of the box. Since we're gonna be writing JSX and not actual HTML, make sure you also change the file extension to .tsx. I want to create one more route just to emphasize this, so we'll just do a slash different, and again, return some simple HTML. This now allows us to go to two different pages, which is great, but we haven't touched on the HTMX yet. To do that, I wanna create a layout component first, and this layout is not only just to be reused across all pages, but it also allows us to import a few things like HTMX and Tailwind. We're also gonna need all the basic tags like HTML, head, body, and inside of the body is where the children prop is actually gonna go. I want to import HTMX and we'll do that through the CDN option that they offer on their website. So we just take that script tag and we can place it inside of our head tag. We can do the same thing with Tailwind. I'll grab the script tag from their get started page and now we have access to everything we need. Let's use our new layout inside of the routes that we created by wrapping our div tags in it. You'll notice that the font changed, which is a good indicator that Tailwind is now working. But also, if you look at the script tags in the browser, both tags that we added should be there. Let me also quickly add some color to the background because the white theme is actually hurting my eyes. And that's a lot better. Now that we have our layout figured out, we can create a home page inside of our pages folder. The contents of this component will obviously have to be wrapped in the layout, but inside of here, what we want our home page to have is a component for creating a new to-do, so we'll call this new to-do. And then also a component that lists all of our existing to-dos, which we'll call to-do list. I'll add the components here, and now we can focus on actually creating them. We'll start with the new to-do component, and for now, I'll just create it and return some text. I'll also make sure that this text is white so it's readable, but let's import it in the home component, and now we can focus on the to-do list component, which for now, we'll just do the same thing by returning some text, and that's just to show that things are working properly. Don't forget to also import this in home. Now that we did all this, we can go back to our routes and delete the slash different route, and we can modify the default route to now return the new home page component that we created. And if we did everything correctly, we should now see the white text we added in our two components. With that done, we can actually focus on building something now. So inside of the new to-do, we can delete the placeholder text that we created. And since we want this to be an input box for the user to type out their to-do and click a button to add it, we'll put this inside of a form. The form will have a label and a text area for the content of the to-do. Like I mentioned, this is where we type out our to-do. But next, we just want a submit button, which will create our to-do. If we look at it on the front end, it won't look very nice at all. I can barely make out the layout and the create is supposed to look like a button, but does doesn't look like one at all. I'll simply just copy and paste some Tailwind styling here. If you'd like to check out the code for the project, there'll be a link in the description. Also, notice that for the styling to work here, instead of using class name like we're used to in React, we actually have to call this like in regular HTML class. But with the styling added, this now looks a lot better. For the to-do list, I'll do the same thing with the styling, but the goal here is basically to just have an unordered list that displays all of our to-dos. It also needs an ID so we can target it later. I'll just call this to-do list, but we can now see that our list looks so much better. It has a nice border as well, but one thing I don't like here is the spacing. So let's fix that real quick by adding some styling to the home page and that's much better. Since we have our list, I guess the first thing we should start with is populating this list with the to-dos that we have in our database from the seed script. 
Looking through the documentation, it looks like running a get request on a route is pretty straightforward. And we can also set a trigger for when we want this to happen, which for us is on load. There's also a swap property, which is able to target a specific element where we want a response to go. It seems like this is able to do a lot of things like replacing content, adding to it, or even just deleting it without doing anything else. But the default is inner HTML, which is exactly what we want. We want the list of to do's to just be displayed inside of our list tag. All we have to do here is add the hx get tag for a get request and the route for it. I'll just put it as slash API slash to do's for now. The trigger, like I mentioned, will just be on load. And if we try refreshing, we'll see that we get a 404 not found. This is because we haven't created the route yet. So we'll just create that route real quick. And in here, we can grab all of our to do's. Normally, depending on how many you have in here, you might want to look into pagination, which HTMX actually supports, but I'll consider that out of the scope of this video for now. We'll simply just map the to do's to a to do item component, which we can create real quick. It'll be just a list item, which just shows the content. And I'll also give this a unique ID, which we'll come back to later, but that's it. Our UI is now loading our list of to-dos from our backend. Next, let's fix up our form in order to actually be able to create some to-dos. Building on what we learned with the list, we want our form to submit the data by doing a post. So we'll write an hx post to our slash API slash to-do. The target this time though won't be inner HTML again, since we don't want the new to-do to replace the form. All we want is to just add it at the end of the list. And this is where the ID on the list comes into play. We called it to-do list. So on our form, we can set the target it as that and for the swap we'll do before end. This will add it at the end of the list, but if you want, you can add it at the top or wherever you want. For the route, this route will simply just take the request coming in and grab the content field since that's what we named it. Next, we just insert it into the database. If for some reason that failed, we can just return an empty block, but otherwise we can return the to-do item. If you were to try and use the create now, you'll notice that we get a 500 error, which is odd. Well, that's because by default, HTMX sends our post request as a URL format. It looks like they provide this extension, which allows us to encode our parameters as JSON. I prefer working with JSON, so we'll add this to our layout really quick. Also, don't forget to add the HX extension property to our form, but now everything is working as expected. The to-do is added at the bottom and we can even look inside a database and see that we have it in there. One last thing I want to add to this is the ability to delete things. Let's modify our to-do item a bit. I'll add some more styling. And also I want to show the timestamp and an X button for being able to delete this to-do. But with all the styling in place, our list already looks so much better. But before we do anything with the button itself, I actually want to create the route first for deleting. It'll be on the same slash API slash to do route. And all this does is just delete the to do with the ID that was passed in. Since we're deleting, I'll just return a check mark just because in a status of 200. Now, in order to send our data from our button to delete the item, we can give the button a name and a value of the ID of that to do. And as expected, this will have the HX delete property to the route that we created. But for the swap, this is where we'll use the delete value. This will just delete the element regardless of the response that we get back. And this really depends on the experience that you want to provide. But the target for this swap will be the exact to do, which is why we gave it that unique ID I mentioned earlier in the tutorial. We also need the same JSON extension. And obviously we want to trigger this when the user clicks on the button. And it looks like I put the status as 201 instead of 200. So let me fix that real quick. Now, if you don't want to simply delete the item regardless of the server response, another alternative is to refetch that list whenever the delete happens. In the documentation, it looks like HTMX provides ways to update other elements as side effects basically. And in this case, I will use the trigger method where we can return a trigger from our delete route. And whenever that trigger is received, our list will update itself. To do this, we just add the header HX trigger to our response and I'll call this to do delete. For our list trigger, it fires off on a page load, but now it also listens for the to do delete header being returned from our request on our page. I'll actually comment out the delete swap on the to do item just so we can see the refetch in full effect. But now you'll notice that whenever I delete a to do, another request is fired off that fetches all the to do's again. Since we're working locally, these requests are really fast and you won't notice the load. But if we were working with a slower connection, there might be a small delay before things disappear from our screen, which is where the swap can come in handy. 
But that's it. We somehow achieved a functional and reactive to-do app through the magic of HTML in 2024. This was a really fun project to build and I love the speed at which I could get things done. So props to the HTMX team on that. As someone coming from a lot of apps where my backend and my frontend logic are split up, it'll definitely take me some getting used to having all that logic blended in together, but maybe it'll be different for someone coming from something like Next.js. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter for updates. And oh, check out my articles on Medium. They take a while to write, so.